Well, Razorback fans, the Razorback basketball team continues to build their roster. It's getting closer and closer to being officially finalized. But is this roster going to be the greatest and most talented Razorback team of all time? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of the John Neighbors Show, which you can catch every weekday afternoon starting at 4 p.m. on Natty State Sports and NattyStateSports.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Friday as we have had so many things to get to and uh, you know, kind of getting into the, the slower time of year. But one thing that I've noticed, and I think we talked about this the other day, is just how people can't get enough of basketball. Like football's there, baseball somewhat, but like basketball, basketball, basketball. And I try to take a lot of things into consideration when it comes to coming up with topics and things to discuss, especially during those slower times. And who knows, maybe I'll get really creative and get everybody involved a little bit more on uh, what they want to discuss and what they want to hear about. But one thing that I, I will say I've been asked about so much, especially after the Trevin Brazil return, which still is controversial, still kind of funny. Um, but knowing what the roster looks like right now for Razorback basketball and knowing the expectation, knowing about the, the, the potential and everything, where does this roster rank? Like, is this a roster that's just built for championships? Is it the most talented roster of all time at Arkansas? And since that question gets thrown to me a lot, in theory, and, and just on paper, I'm like, well, we'll see. <laughs> you know, it, it looks pretty good, but we'll see. But then the more and more I start thinking about it, and I start kind of putting it together, I'm like, you know, it will be almost disappointing if this roster does not end up being the best and most talented roster the Razorback basketball team has ever had. Now, there is a difference, folks, between having the most talented individual roster and actually having the, the best team. Because the 1994 Razorback basketball team that won the national championship had a lot of great players on it. But individual talent-wise and going to the NBA at least, I mean, there was really only, what, three players on that roster that went to the NBA and actually played? I mean, Corliss Williamson was obviously the biggest one. I know Corey Beck had a stint there. I think Clint McDaniel did too. But the point is, is that it was, as far as the NBA, maybe not the most talented, but it was the best team because they won a national championship. And that's great. I'm not taking anything away from them. So please don't start throwing things at me. But even if you have a roster like what Arkansas has right now at the individual level and knowing how good some of these players are or at least can be, I think there's some reasons to point to the fact that yeah, yeah, this is a uh, this is a this is a big time deal. This is a big time roster here because if you're looking at just the freshmen that are coming in, like Billy Richmond, Carter Knox, as well as Boogie Fland, those three guys right there are good enough to be one and done. It's not saying they will for sure or just you know get drafted high into the NBA. But anytime you're a five-star McDonald's All-American coming out of high school, that's always the expectation. But the reason I'm starting there is because that might be the three worst players on the team. And when I say worst, uh, I'm, I'm being obviously facetious. And I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying, like, when you're freshman, you're coming in, sometimes it's a hit or miss. You just never know how they're going to adapt and how they're going to go. But then you throw in after that some of the transfers, and even like the Kentucky transfers. DJ Wagner is going to be a sophomore. You're going to have Big Z, who's going to be a sophomore. And then Adu Thierro, he's going to be a junior. So those three guys, I know Wagner was one of the best players coming out of high school. I think there's potential there for him to get drafted if he has a big season. Um, You know, I don't know about Big Z getting drafted, but no, who knows? Maybe, maybe somebody like... Uh, Maybe somebody like uh, Adu Thierro may, may bust through. Like, I think he's a really good player. So, again, there's potential there, but you just never really know for sure. But then you throw in the other ones, too. You got John L. Davis. I think that dude is so legit. 
And I think he'll get drafted. I think there's all the potential in the world for, for him to get drafted. I think Jonas Adu, uh, you know, will he get drafted high? But I don't know. But if he is able to improve upon his last year, which last year was so ingre- incredible, he's one of the most improved players in the SEC. If he jumps to another level of improvement even more, there's potential there. And say what you want about it, but even Trevin Brazil, there's been times where he has been on a lot of draft boards. If he stays healthy and if he improves and he becomes even better, there's potential there. Now, am I sitting here and saying that every one of these players that are on the Razorback roster is going to get drafted into the NBA? No, I am not. I think that's a tall ask for anybody. Some of these players may be two-year players or at least play another season. Because uh, again, the only ones that can, they really that they're going to be moving on will be Adu and John L. Davis. All the other guys are eligible to keep playing if they wanted to, if they decided to. And it doesn't even mean that they would decide to continue to play at Arkansas. They can enter in the portal again, you know, because of all those rules and those changes. But the point is, is that you have a lot of potential because if you told me that any of these players would get drafted, I wouldn't be shocked. Like maybe Big Zia would be a little bit, but any of the other ones, I wouldn't just be floored. Oh my gosh, that's a shock. And even some of them too, with way that they've, you know, made the decision to go and play for Cal, you know, I'm sure Kentucky fans will roll their eyes at it, but it's true. It's like he gets pros. He, he gets guys into the pros more so than anybody and more effectively than anybody and more consistently than anybody. So they're playing for the right coach. They're playing for the right coach. So again, do I believe that this team is going to be so talented that they're going to walk through the SEC and take care of business and just not even care about anything in the world, just take, just blow it up, make it happen, like be big time? I hope so, but... There's no guarantees. There's a lot of new players, even though I guess two, three of the players that are on the team now have played together at Kentucky. The other ones have not played in this system or at the, on this roster. And the other front are freshmen. So who knows? That's what's going to be fascinating about this year under Cal. Talent-wise, they're as good as anybody. I mean, I think John Rothstein had him as the number nine team in the country. And, you know, I don't think anybody's going to argue with that. It's just nice to go from one coach to another and still have the expectation to go along with it. But just imagine if Arkansas had five players drafted off this roster, which I think is feasible. I think that's realistic. Five players drafted in next year's NBA draft off this roster. I would certainly hope that a minute was a great year. Would certainly hope so. Because it's it's going to be... It's going to be a, one of two things. Either Arkansas is going to have a phenomenal regular season and they're going to lose early in the tournament or they're going to have a phenomenal regular season and they're going to go far into the NCAA tournament. Like I don't think that there's an in-between. I just don't see any way, shape, or form a talented roster like this in the regular season does not have a great year. Like, I, I just don't see any scenario where that happens. But we all know that it's about the NCAA tournament. It's about moving forward. It's about being that team that's good enough to go and to good enough to get the right matchups and make the right plays. It's always tough to do, but I think this Arkansas roster is going to have the ability and the talent-wise to make it happen. We're going to talk about something that's uh, been brought up today or earlier today about Calipari leaving Arkansas. Stay with me. We'll talk about it. But first, I'm going to tell you about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and so much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need at all the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home those huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available for U.S. customers. You are locked on Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, this was something that was brought up a lot uh, this morning, or I guess this morning when I'm recording this the night before, but Thursday morning. The NBA is a wild, wild thing when it comes to coaches. I don't understand it. Like, it's all very dumb to me. But anyways, it was looking like the Lakers, LeBron James, you know, that team, we're looking to bring in J.J. Redick as a head coach because why not? Sure. Makes sense to me. But anyways, I, who cares? That's not the point. The point is, is that even though that looked like it was going to be happening, it started exploding where suddenly Hurley, Danny Hurley from UConn, his name was all the rage. All the rage. And it was even being reported that the Lakers were going to throw a lot at him to make him the next head coach of the Lakers. Now, this could be politics. This could be mind games. It could be just, oh, well, you know, they're doing that. So that way, when they do hire J.J. Redick, uh, they're like, so, well, we tried to get Hurley, but it just didn't work out. So we're just getting Redick anyways. I mean, it could just be a lot of crap. But it was at least interesting because... Every man's got a price. And I don't know what Hurley would do. I don't know why Hurley would leave college basketball in his situation at UConn. He's won back-to-back -back national championships, and it hasn't really even been close. So he's got a good thing going on there. But anyways, say if he left, which this was the topic that everyone was talking about. If he left, UConn, what would they do? Because, you know, it's a great job. Who would they go after? And suddenly, maybe half-jokingly, some people start throwing around, well, just hire John Calipari. Just get John Calipari to go over there to UConn. And, of course, some of it was tongue-in-cheek, but then some people were actually serious about it. So the question became, would Cal leave Arkansas? I mean, he's on a five-year contract. He's 65 years old. You know, he made a jump to Arkansas, which was a huge, huge step and a wild step. Still sometimes got to pinch myself to remind myself that, yeah, this is happening. But would he leave? And my initial reaction is no, of course not. Of course not. Why would he? I mean, it's one thing to change jobs, but I mean, in this stage in your career and being just now getting here to Arkansas, you got everything you want. Obviously, you got great NIL. You got facility support. You got everything that you need. So yeah, of course you wouldn't leave. But then part of me started thinking a little bit more in depth about it. I'm like, you know, there would be there would be a way, there would be a chance, because there's always a chance that Cal would leave. And this would be the only way I see him leaving. I'm not predicting it to be this way, but this would be the only way I could see Cal Perry leaving. If Cal Perry somehow really started struggling. Like, say this year, this upcoming season, where he's gotten all the talent, and it all looks great, and they've spent a lot in NIL, and then he's got the big pomp circumstances. Say if this year, they barely win 20 regular season games. Fall backwards kind of into the NCAA tournament, and then get bounced out of the first round. Say if they went in there as like a 7 or 8 seed. Got bounced out. Not saying that Razorback fans would you know, take to getting pitchforks and everything, but there would be an element of, yeah, that's not great. That's not a great start. Not a great start. You know, you flooded all the money in. You, you gave them all the support. Yeah, you, you had the talent on paper for sure. And that was the result. Wouldn't be great. Wouldn't be great. So if that happened suddenly there would be a little bit more of caution when it came to NIL spending. That's what happens. And we saw it happen a little bit at Arkansas under Muss. 
I've said many times that Arkansas is a great setup for NIL. I still believe it. I'm still going to say it. They do. They have a great setup for NIL. However, people who are giving the big, big money to the NIL, they're not stupid. They're not stupid. If you're a company, and I'm just using this as a crazy example, but if you're a company that gave $2 million of your hard-earned money that could have gone elsewhere to your business, could have gone to doing other things, whatever it is. If you gave $2 million and you're like, all right, yeah, let's do this, man. So yeah, get these players in and all of that. And you're excited because you got front row seats. You're on Gucci Row. You're like, man, this is going to be part of my investment. See that? Hey, see that guy? See the player right there? That starting point guard over there? Yeah, that was my money that got in. Yeah, because of me. They wouldn't have gotten him unless it was me. So yeah, he's, he's my guy. He's my guy over there. Like, say if all that happened, and then the season sucked, or at least didn't live up to the expectation. At the end of the year, if it didn't happen, and say if that player, that guy that was given $2 million, that company that gave $2 million, saw that the player didn't play very well, didn't have the season he was wanting, maybe had a bad attitude, maybe wasn't appreciative, and then on top of it, the team not being very good, not having the success, you're like, what the crap? I paid all that money, and this is what I get? So then the next season, that player transfers, moves on, and somebody come, and they come back and you, hey man, you know, we need, we need that, you know, we'd love to have you a part of it again and all that. Suddenly that person, that businessman's like, Yeah, no, I'm I'm I get you, but I, I don't know. Like that's I don't know if I want to give that much money to be disappointed again. So I'm getting that type of money. I expect results. And they fight back and forth, well, uh, maybe I'll go in 1.5. And maybe they're not the only ones that do that. But the point is, is that if those things started to happen and the NIL start going down a little bit because of the success or lack thereof on the court, I could see Cal being like, oh, well, mm, I don't know about this now. I can't I can't put together the team I want to put together without this without this NIL, without this money. I need a roster like this. I got to have it. Oh, let's see. Um. Sir, uh, I don't know. Well, well, just don't tell anybody. But if you find a job that might be open that may be able to like get me the what I need a little bit more consistently, then I'll do it. It's like, oh, I got you. And then the UConn job opens up, or Duke, Carolina, Kansas, something like that. Suddenly, they look at Cal. I'm like, hey, Cal. It looks like uh, you're not. Not having as much money as you originally had because you have not had the success on the court. Well, if you come to here to Kansas or Duke or wherever, we can get you going. Get you that money, no problem. I could see Cal saying, Yeah, let's go, let's go do that. Now, the only reason I brought up that whole scenario, folks, is not to say it's going to happen, because I don't think it's going to happen. I brought it up to let you all know. That there's never a sure thing. That long-term coaches, they just don't exist anymore. Even the most successful ones. Like, I am sure that UConn was hoping that Danny Early would be up there forever. And he hasn't taken the job, at least not at the time of the recording of this podcast. They're probably hoping for it. But if he leaves, it wouldn't be surprising. So just keep that in mind. I think Cal will be here all five years of his contract, maybe even longer. I think he'll have a high level of success. I think it'll be great. I think it'll be great. But just never feel 100% safe when it comes to coaches at your school. Not anymore, at least. We'll do the final segment, talk a little bit about sponsorships of college football and midfield logos on the other side of the break, so stay with us. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, There's this really funny story that uh, I saw that in college football, which is ever-changing, ever-growing. But um, the NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Panel, they approved the addition of sponsorship logos on football fields beginning in 2024. The NCAA Football Rules Committee previously recommended the change. 
And according to uh, a lot of the new stuff, it says that uh, they can have corporate advertisement placed at the 50-yard line as well as two smaller advertisements at the flank of the midfield logo for a total of three corporations on the field. And they could be sold on a game-by-game basis or season-long basis. So there is a possibility that it could be happening across the entire conference, entire across college football, which I'm actually, no, there's not a possibility. It's going to happen. You know why? Because everybody wants more money. And if you can have corporate sponsorships on midfield logos, so be it. You're going to do it. So I started thinking about Arkansas and the Razorbacks. I think that they're going to have a midfield logo. And it's going to be a sponsor. But which one? Like, see, the basic one would be at eh, Walmart. That's not probably going to happen. Or actually, no, I'll take that back. It probably would happen. Or Tyson, Chicken Man Money, J.B. Hunt. You know, like just the, the regulars, you know, the common ones. But the other thing is, I would love to see something funny at the midfield logo. Like something unique. Like if it's bad boy mowers, that'd be kind of cool. Somebody jokingly put the, said the Natty State Sports logo, which would be really funny. That ain't happening. But it'd be funny. But you know what the one I thought of? I was like, what if, what if Jerry Jones just put a Dallas Cowboys star? You know, he's all about that brand, baby. What if in the midfield... You had a Jerry Jones star or like the Razorback logo was still in the middle of the field, but then like the flanks of it and everything Dallas Cowboys star that, that I could have 100% see Jerry Jones, man. He's all about that brand, baby. It's all about that money. And I think he would absolutely be down to do that. And I don't think that'd be the worst thing in the world either. If he did, honestly, like if, if he ended up putting the logos down there, and he paid, he paid the money for it. And hey, at least it's somebody that we know and love here in Arkansas. Well, non-Cowboy fans, at least. We love him as a Razorback fan. That's that's what's key. So who knows? Maybe that's what he does. Maybe that's what he does to, to do some branding. But I can't, I can't wait to see what Arkansas is going to be. Hopefully it ends up being something good. But either way, appreciate everybody listening in and watching into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at John Neighbors Show for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Tomorrow afternoon, have a great day, everybody. We'll see.